Hey guys, MC Mura here and today we're gonna talk about the fire pool problem in Street Fighter 6 because I do think there is something to discuss here. Now, fireballs have always been a very traditional element of Street Fighter. Fireball uppercut is like real Street Fighter. If you're talking to a lot of the OGs, just throwing fireball and then uppercutting, that is big, that is big, right? But it's no secret, in modern fighting games, especially like Street Fighter 5, Street Fighter 6, maybe Street Fighter 4 even to an extent to be honest, uh, if your idea of Street Fighter is Fireball Uppercut, uh, that can't really win you games, right? Because typically, like, jumping, this deals way more damage. Jumps were a had a lot less block stun and hit stun in previous games, so it was a lot harder to get, like, jumping into full combo, right? especially in, like, the real OG games, like Street Fighter 2. But here, you got hit once, you're now in the corner, you're gonna have to deal with the situation, at least that throw is almost guaranteed. And you're gonna have to deal with the situation, you lost half of your life because you threw your fireball, you know how it is, right? But still, in this game, Capcom have made some choices that made fireballs... I don't know. Now, we still got the heavy fireballs. These ones are really fast. Typically, we'd use them uh, from the poke distance and as a way to like check the opponent that is not ultra committal. That's fine. That is how it have always been. These guys, uh, they're, they're very classic, right? And there's also the light fireball, something like a Kekoken from uh, Chun-Li, something like a light sonic boom. Slow projectiles that typically you will approach the opponent uh, behind, right? So for example, if I'm from this distance and I did like a heavy Kekoken, right? This puts me at a plus nine advantage. If I do a light, the slow one, uh, I was actually more than plus 26 here plus 23 so there's more advantage substantial advantage now in the classic games and this is this is something that capcom actually did not change right in the classic games if i did like a fireball and then double dashed typically i don't have that much plus frame especially from like the round star distance right check this out i was minus nine right i was minus nine from this distance from the round star distance if i dash twice behind my fireball i'm negative right so it wasn't really the case of me being able to like dash behind it twice and then throw an opponent or like go for a low overhead mix typically this didn't really happen what typically happened is you would throw the fireball and then maybe dash once and check with a normal after so we do something like this right maybe check with a heavy bunch maybe check with a crouching medium kick and that is typically how it went you weren't really getting more than that this is how it was in street fighter 5 this is how it was in street fighter 2 street fighter 4 classic street fighter games this is typically how fireballs function even guile like he would throw the boom and then like check he was a crouching medium kick after gain some space or just walk behind it and gain some space right but this game introduced a different element and that element is the drive rush obviously right now in this game if you do a fireball a light fireball kind of like shan lee's and then do a drive rush behind it check this out shan lee was plus eight and you can act out of your drive rush faster than you can block right which means that now the opponent have to deal with like an overhead here i just did a strike i can go for an overhead i can go for a low right and all of these lead to combos uh the overhead out of the drive rush this gives Shan Li like a full on bread and butter. Uh, she can go for the light and she still get to convert after. Guile, he gets to do a crouching medium kick. Right? And then flash kick after or even convert into like the heavy bunch. Right? So he's getting like full on combos and obviously the overhead, uh, this does give him combos as well. So what I'm trying to say is this is now like a legit mix that can lead to a lot of damage. And let's say for example that here's a guy is jumping, he's gonna try to jump to evade the mix. You still get the ability to anti-air and guy will get like a juggle state out of this as well. Right, and I obviously miss misspaced it, but you get the point, right? What I'm trying to say is this is a mix-up that's actually really safe and really hard for the opponent to play around. Now there is an option, there is an answer, right? And that answer is what you know about the answer to everything Street Fighter 6. Perfect Perry. Because check this out, Perfect Perry reduced the advantage that I had from plus 20 or so, plus 23, plus 24 to plus 9. 
right? Plus nine means that drive rush, I can act at least, the fastest I can act out of a drive rush is at 11 frames. So my drive rush is now actually getting punished, right? Uh, let's say, for example, set a guy to try to crouch a medium punch. See this? Like now I actually get punished. If I go for this like overhead, I'm hella getting punished. If I go for the crouching medium kick, I still get punished. So I get checked, right? What I'm trying to say is I get checked in this instant. And obviously he can do like something that even better, like an OD somersault, right? And that beats everything. So perfect parry is a very good option. But perfect parry relies on your timing, right? Your timing on the parry is what dictates it. If you do a regular parry, you still have to deal with the mix, right? And this opens up another door because the thing is, if you're holding the parry because of the follow-up, like if Guile here is holding the parry because he got to guess on the overhead or the low, this opens up the door to me dashing up and then getting the grab on him. And now this is like a real mix. This is now a mix between a throw, a low and overhead, right? He can't jump and he can't really do much else in this instance, especially if you're playing a character without a reversal. And like I showed you, in this situation, if Guile even tried to OD Somersault, because Shan Li's blast, she actually get to block, and now Mr. Guile get hella punished, right? So this is a real mix. A mix that, in my opinion, is totally unearned, but it is what it is. Now, there is another aspect to this that you have to consider, and that is the fact that Barry actually reduces pushback. Here, Guile is gonna do a regular block. Take a look at Guile, right? His feet is at the end of the three bar, right? At the, at the bar, right? Just before, just in front of the three icon. So if he blocks the light Kikoken, he get pushed back further, right? He get pushed back after the three icon, right? But if he goes for a drive parry, See this? Now he's exactly on the three. So what I'm trying to say is, just getting the regular parry pushes you less. And because you're being pushed back less, the mix-up is actually more potent here because Chun is closer to you. Whatever she's gonna do, that is like the overhead, the crouching medium kick, or the throw, all of that she is closer to you post fireball so that becomes more effective right if the opponent here is just going for a gra uh, for a regular block like guy is just gonna block i have to drive rush more see this this fireball this grab here this whiffed with the regular block but with a drive parry he gets thrown so what i'm trying to say is because there is because you could push back less with a drive parry the throw becomes actually better <laughs> right and what this means is if the opponent got a fireball drive rush this is now a mini game a mini game that you consistently have to play around right characters like shan Li abuse this really well guile abuse this really well aki we got in some situations dj with his od fireballs we got jury a jury is completely egregious so we got a lot of characters where this is a mini game that you consistently have to play, right? And this is not the only aspect that I do think fireballs and perfect parry in general kind of work in ways that I personally don't like. There is something in this game, there is something in Street Fighter that has always been called bad fireballs, right? So for example, for example, I'm gonna set Guile Hill to uh, block my fireballs and throw a boom, right? See this, right? So this is a fireball that is almost bad. This is a fireball that is almost unsafe. But check this out. He gets to perfect parry, right? So this is a fireball that is almost unsafe. In this instant, Guile can't OD flash kick. Guile can't use an anti-air normal. Guile traditionally had to block right i'm not saying that this is a bad fireball that should always get punished right and you can change his frame data so he's more negative right but check this out this is bad fireball now because perfect parry exists a fireball that guile had to block the jumping after is now a fireball that he gets to parry and becomes minus eight plus eight and now we have to deal with the mini game of is he gonna try to perfect parry the jumping is he not am i safe am i getting the jumping hit am i not 
it's very annoying it's very tedious i'm not gonna lie this is an interaction that i don't love whatsoever here's the thing i don't think capcom need to change how uh, fireballs work and i don't necessarily think they should change how fireballs work what they need to change is drive rush and i'm not even, i'm not even talking about the mechanic i'm talking about the individual characters uh, for a character for example like shan lee right I don't think she should be able to cover this much distance with her drive rush if she got a fireball that behaves that way. This is actually a problem that Capcom had already fixed with a character like Ed. Ed fixes the situation. Remember what I showed you with uh, Chun Li being able to drive rush and then grab you, right? His drive rush doesn't get that far. His drive rush, it doesn't go that far, right? So he can't really abuse you in the same way. And obviously, it doesn't got an overhead as well, right? So he can't really abuse you in the same way that Chun Li can. Some characters in this game, like for example, Juri. Juri is egregious. Like her being able to do this is completely ridiculous. This is completely because obviously she got like the low, she got the overhead, and the grab here is so powerful. Her doing her like round start, fireball, OD, fireball into drive rush, that is so good with Juri, it's it's kind of unbelievable, right? She very easily forces the situation that <laughs> I don't know what to say about, honestly. Like that, that's kind of ridiculous. So what they should do is what they did with Ed, right? Either target the pushback on Norman so that on on here, for example, he doesn't get a throw mix he doesn't get a throw mix he doesn't get a throw mix either targeted that way or make it so that the, the drive rush is shorter right the drive rush is just shorter that now this doesn't create the, i'm gonna drive rush and then i'm gonna grab you and you have to deal with the mix right what are your thoughts do you think capcom should target them the way they did with ed i think i think it's a problem that capcom had already fixed but what about jury like it's it seems that they wanted her to have like a very powerful drive rush and kind of the same with shun lee right and maybe this kind of backfired and turned the characters into mini games to be honest in many ways it's a mini game like i said that you kind of have to consistently lube what are your thoughts how can capcom address this issue because I do think this this is just not fun. I don't know if this is very fun to apply, and I honestly don't know if this is very fun to play against. I'm not I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely honest. Anyways, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comment section below. How do you think Capcom should target this? Do you think this is something that Capcom should address at all? Leave it as it is. I would love to hear your thoughts about all of this in the comment section below. I will be leaving a link to the Patreon, Discord, Twitter, and Twitch pages in the description. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.